Well, hello friends. I hope you had a great weekend and are ready to get a brand new week kicked off. I, I trust that yesterday while you were worshiping that you began to make preparations and pray about and, and believe that this was going to be a great week this week and that God was going to lead and guide every step of the way. Now, if you didn't, you missed a great opportunity because I guarantee you he will absolutely do that if you'll just give him uh, the right to do it, he will do it. Hey, well, welcome to Monday's edition of Take 5. Now, if you were in church with us yesterday, you know, I didn't preach yesterday. We had Alabama Adult and Teen Challenge with us, and man, what a great, great service we had with those guys. Listening to those six testimonies of those young men, how uh, God has worked in their life, uh, and how God is getting them back on course as they are yielding to him. Now, I want to read a passage of scripture to you today. This is, you know, it's a little longer than I usually read, but I want to read a passage of scripture to you today that, that I believe was the very cause of where those young men ended up uh, in uh, sin as they were. And uh, it's, it's our problem too as well. I'll go ahead and tell you the title of this. It's The Danger of Distraction. That's how they ended up where they were, dealing with addictions and other problems, is because they got distracted somewhere along the way and got focused on something that they should not have been focused on instead of on God. That's our problem too. That's not just for people in Teen Challenge or people dealing with addiction. That's our problem too is keeping our focus on the Lord. There's so much today um, with attention disorders. We see it in children. We've even named it in adults today. But the devil has been using distractions for a long time. And if he can get us distracted long enough, that joker will sneak in there and he'll wreak havoc on our life. If he can keep us turned away and focused anywhere but where we should be, he will absolutely sneak in the back door. So let me read a passage of scripture to you. We may talk about it a little bit as we go uh, and uh, kind of set the scene for where we're going this week. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I am reading from the King James Version um, today. I just like the way it lays this particular passage out. Paul says, But this I say, brothers, the time is short. It remaineth that both that they that have wives be as though they had none. Now he's not saying get rid of your wife. He's not saying that. He's saying the time is short. We've got to do our business for God and we've got to serve just like we were single. That means we've got double duty now, right? Because we've got a responsibility to our wife, to our spouse, and we have a responsibility to serve God as well. Okay, that's what it means. And let those that weep be as those that wept not and those that rejoice as though they rejoice not and they that buy as though they possess not and they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passes away. Now, he says none of those things are wrong unless they distract you from serving God. Listen to what he's saying. But I would have you to be without carefulness. He that's unmarried cares for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that's married cares for the things that of this world, how he may please his wife. Remember, I told you it's double duty there. There's also a difference between a wife and a virgin or an unmarried woman. The unmarried woman cares for the things of the Lord, but that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that's married cares for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. So she's got double duty. She doesn't get to leave her husband. He's not saying it's better necessarily to be single or if you are married, leave your husband or leave your wife so that you can focus on the Lord. He's telling you, you've got double duty. You've got a responsibility. <clears throat> to your spouse, and you've got a responsibility to God. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm, I'm choking on this thing. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, that you may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Now let me read that last verse in the New Living Translation. I'm saying this for your benefit, not to place restrictions on you. I want you to do whatever will help you serve the Lord best with as few distractions as possible. The danger of distractions. Everything around us is fighting for our attention. Sin wants our attention. God wants our attention. Families want our attention. 
And we have the responsibility of keeping things in proper order and making sure that we do not get distracted and look away from where we should be focused. We've got to keep our focus on God. So let me define distraction for you. It's the drawing away or the diversion of the mind in a different direction that one should be thinking. You ever deal with that? You ever have your mind just going all squirrely crazy, going everywhere, thinking everything except what you should be? It's a distraction. Number two, it's to stir up and confuse with conflicting emotions and motives. Again, all of these things happening now, gone from our mind, gone to our emotions, all of these things are for one reason only, and that's to get our attention off of what we are purposed to do. Definition number three, something that preoccupies, engrosses, or diverts proper thought process. Again, it keeps me from thinking properly and thinking what I should be thinking and doing what I should be doing. And definition four, anything that contends for your attention, your affection, or your allegiance. That's everything around us. It's contending for our affection, our attention, and our allegiance. All of it's doing it. The sin is doing it. The devil's doing it. God is doing it. All of these things. The world is doing it. All of these things are pulling on us from every angle. And we have one responsibility, and that is to keep our focus on God. Because if we get distracted, as my wife often tells me, because I, I, I look everywhere when I'm drive and I look everywhere. She tells me that I drive where I look. Well, it's, it's a fact. If you stay distracted long enough, that's where you'll drive. That's where you'll go. That's where you'll end up if you stay distracted long enough. Because being distracted is really nothing more than putting your attention, your focus on something that it shouldn't be on. And so that's how these guys ended up in Teen Challenge. That's how we end up uh, dealing with the consequences from bad decisions. That's how we end up with the problems that some of us have in our lives sometimes. It's simply we set our focus, we set our attention on something that should not be on, and that became a distraction to what should have been our main purpose. In short, all of this just simply means that distractions are minor issues of this world that take our attention off of God and our divine purpose here on earth. So here's what the Bible tells us to do. He says, if you are risen with Christ, seek the things which are above. Focus on the things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth. Distractions come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. Some of them are sickness and financial crisis. It can be rebellious children. It can be a bad day at work. That can be a distraction. It can be family rivalry, family arguments. Other people's faults and failures can distract us if we focus on that. Material possessions, relationships, habits, addictions, bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness, hurt feelings, trials, temptations. The list can go on and on and on and on and on. Thousands of distractions out there and every one of them has the potential to draw us away from God. And, and what the devil's intending to do, if he can get our attention off of God, he'll sneak right in the back door and he'll make havoc in our life. So it's important that we stay focused on God. Well, that's what we're going to talk about this week. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here today. I'll be right here with you tomorrow on Tuesday's edition of Take 5. Until then, God bless you. Have a great day. Hey, stay focused, my friend. Don't get distracted. Keep your attention on God because I guarantee you, he has his attention on you.